tonight we are going to be going through um, Monix. So Rob Reed is the founder of Monix, the effective budgeting tool. The way that I um, basically came across Monix was um, because in my personal finance course, um, where I teach people how to master their personal finances to take strain off their business um i used to use a spreadsheet and that spreadsheet required my mind and it was quite um hard to create and and i couldn't give it to the masses so when i saw monix monix is a perfect tool to help you budget now so you can actually plan for your financial future um going forward and you can see how your spending today will get you on the course for your for your goals so um thank you so much very welcome thanks for having me on so no problem basically what um you've asked for is just to to go through how monix works uh, and what it shows you so um i've just put together a couple of slides and i just wanted to start um by making it work I just wanted to start with a quote from the beloved J.K. Rowling, which is, it is our choices that show what we truly are far more than our abilities. Because a lot of the time, um, both you and I have found this, hence why you're doing what you're doing and hence why I've created Monix. It, we see people bury their head in the sand when it comes to finances, especially because finance is a um, terrifying word to be honest we've associated it with fear we've associated with not speaking about it um, whenever you talk about finances in terms of people's wages it's all hush hush you're not allowed to say what each other earns and um, it's all very head in the sand we're not really taught a huge amount about it so having a financial overview is not necessarily within our ability but choosing to do something about it um, is very much within our ability. Getting help is very much within our ability. And actually, it shows real strength. Um, so, you know, I pr massively appreciate what you're doing. And uh, thank you for the introduction for um, the kind words about when you found Monix. So I appreciate that. So what I'll do is if there's anyone watching this um, live, then please feel free to comment. Um, Georgia will actually have a look through those comments and uh, and pose me any questions because she's uh, controlling the this session. So she'll be able to do that uh, in a live fashion. Um, but I do want to ask you, and if you uh, are on this live, please, do, and even if you're not on this live, do comment onto the video. Um, how often do you check your account balance? Now, whether that's you go into the bank, whether that's you've got an accounting book that you write your ins and outs in, um, or you log on to your app, how often do you actually check your account balance? Probably most of you will say quite often. Um, if, you're, if you've got your head fully buried in the sand, then not often. Um, but normally it's um, a couple of times a week um, at the very least and uh, to check, make sure you've, you've got black uh, on your figures rather than red, right? Um, so what I want to talk to you about is the actual key number, okay? Because account balance can be misleading. So this is what we in uh, Monix called the lifestyle balance. And this is what um, actually fits in nicely with what Georgia talks about in terms of financial health. Um, so we refer to it sometimes as your financial health. So lifestyle balance, you can easily calculate this because you take your total account balance. So this is all of your accounts together and you add all of those up. You take away any of your fixed outgoings. So these are all of your monthly uh, standing orders, direct debits, all of, your, all of your fixed costs that come out of your accounts. Money envelopes I will speak about a little bit more in a minute, but this is everything that you are saving for. So you can see there, there's birthdays and Christmas, everything that you know you've got to pay for in the future, whether that's near or far. So house deposits on there, bottom left. Um, anything that you've got to pay for, we call envelopes in Monix. So you take into account everything that you've got in your envelopes and minus that from your account balance. And you also minus your budget. So this is 
when people talk about terms of budgeting, that's a fantastic thing to do, by the way. Um, but it is one small step in the overall financial picture and that process. So if you minus all of those, you then get your total lifestyle balance. And here's, I'm going to show you a, um, a demo example, but this is actually taken um, from almost from a real life, uh, just to show you actually how commonly uh, misleading an account balance is. So what we're going to build here is what you will see the Monix dashboard to be. We're only going to build parts of it. There's a couple of other elements um, that I'm happy to show you if you want to see that live. Otherwise, um, you, we can go through that either you with Georgia or you can go onto the website and have a look at that um, later on. Or you can join. We run a, a webinar which is actually using Monix and goes properly into the depths of how to use it. So we can show you all of that. But let's talk about this lifestyle balance. Um, so there's the sum up there on the left. So total account balance minus your fixed outgoings, minus your money envelopes, minus your living budget. So here are our accounts. Now in the Monix dashboard, they sit bottom left because bottom left is not normally the go-to for the eye. And ultimately we don't want it to be the go-to for the eye. So they sit down there, but let's total all of those. Now we can see we've got a credit card that spent uh, a whole eight pounds ninety nine pence on it. Uh, yours and mine certainly is um, has larger um, number on there, but you take that into account. So um, the eight ninety nine has been deducted from the others already. You then add uh, takeaway, sorry, your fixed outgoings. Now notice how some of those are in grey, some of those are in black. This screenshot was taken uh, yesterday on the uh, the seventh. So the black in Monix, it automates all of this for you. So it automatically shows you these are your fixed outgoings, monthly direct debit, standing orders. The black is what's yet to come out. So when the screenshot was taken on the 7th, um, Audible on the 8th was still to come out. So if we logged into this today, that would now be grey. And that total down the bottom right hand side, as you can see down here, is all of the outgoings that are still yet to come out of the accounts. These are the envelopes. So, I mean, it's very self-explanatory, but think of it, a physical envelope, you actually get an envelope, you get your envelope, you write on the front what you want to put, uh, say for, you write when your target date is, and you figure out how many months away that is. So let's say Christmas, for example. Now you're gonna wanna spend in November, so we have got all of um, August, September, October, and then November we want to spend. So we've got four months of savings. So if, you're, if you've got a fresh envelope and you say you want 200 pounds and you've got four months, you need to put 50 pounds a month into that envelope. So it's 200, your target amount, divided by how many months you have got. And that gives you the, the amount that you need to put into that envelope each month. That's what Monix does for you automatically. Now, the important thing is here, it's not shifting money out or moving any uh, money from your accounts. So you don't need to have a separate account. You don't need to worry that it's not accessible. It is in your account. Um, it's just in Monix, it's showing you putting aside what money you're, you're saving for. So that's those. And then our living budget. Now our living budget, we split down into five categories. You can choose what categories these are, but if you have any more than five categories for a budget, it becomes a little bit overwhelming and also difficult to track. Now, what we've got here is very simple um, and very effective. And as you spend throughout the month in that, your available on the right-hand side will uh, obviously lower because you will have less available to spend in that budget. So you're taking your available living budget because anything that you've already spent in your living budget, anything that you've already, has already come out of your accounts in your fixed outgoing have already come out of your account balance already. So we don't need to double account for those. Um, so we're just taking out what's available and what's yet to come out. What that gives us is this balance at the top. If you uh, do the sums on this example, that comes to minus £2,013.44. A considerable difference from our account balance that shows us £15,508.56. 
So you might log into your accounts and go, very healthy, and it is great, it is very good, um, and think, oh, you know, I can buy what I want to buy, I can go for a takeaway, go out for dinner, go for a, uh, a maybe not quite to the pub um, for a, a boozy weekend and with the lads yet, but um, certainly soon. But actually, your lifestyle balance, because the lifestyle you've planned for, especially over here on the right-hand side within our envelopes, means that your your actual balance is a negative two thousand and thirteen pounds so why is that well let's just look at the lifestyle we've planned for in this demonstration under um envelopes this key one down here on the bottom left that we mentioned earlier this house deposit we want to save up and buy a house great fantastic position to be in the money that you have put aside and a lot of people will do this in their mind they think all right i've got 12 grand put aside for a house that's fantastic that's actually, you can see most of that's in the savings account. So you've actually separated that out manually by a separate account. Um, but actually, with everything else that we need to buy, including vehicle expenses, uh, repayment of loans, uh, tax and accounting fees, the holiday that we want to save up for, a catastrophe fund that we need, we need to buy Christmas presents, birthday presents. That lifestyle, which is not an unusual lifestyle by all accounts, in fact, it's very common, means that you are in a deficit. You cannot afford, based on the amount of money that you've got, to live the lifestyle that you're planning for. So we can quite easily plan a different lifestyle. So a negative lifestyle balance doesn't mean it's necessarily a bad thing. Um, and I've just made a video today that's going to go out onto our YouTube platform tomorrow um, that's showing you, in, in fact, exactly this example, how you can take this lifestyle balance and very quickly, within a couple of minutes, make that a zero balance, which is which is where we want to be. So if you're at a negative balance, we want to go to a zero balance. And if you're at a zero balance, you want to then start building up a positive balance. And that's what um, we in Monix call months in the bank um and we do that in the lifestyle balance you can do that in the envelope uh, georgia and i had a discussion about this uh, the other day about putting them in envelopes um but you can do that actually on the lifestyle balance because as part of monix uh, and again it's not on these slides but it is actually on the dashboard down the bottom right hand side it shows you how um how much you need to bring in each month to have a to be in a good position to be able to afford your lifestyle if that makes sense so it shows you actually what you need to earn to pay for everything in life this isn't just oh i need to take into account bills this is quite literally everything uh, that you want to plan your lifestyle so this is a lifestyle planner based around money uh, and gets you financially able to do that um so essentially i wanted to end with just another quote um haruki um murakami is a japanese author he is fantastic and he says pain is inevitable suffering is optional and he's absolutely right um we know that things in life cost money cash flow is a fluid thing um but you don't need to suffer and a lot of the time we as individuals suffer because we hide away from something um and we don't face the music we don't even track or or keep a record of because we don't want to see it and actually seeing is the first stage of being able to do something about it if you don't know what's there you don't know what to do actually suffering is therefore optional so all of this can help very um very much so that's about me, Georgia, just on going through Monix. If anyone's got any questions, if you've got any questions, then um, I'll happily um, answer them. 100%. No, that was great. That's fantastic. And I think it's so good to know exactly how your day-to-day -day choices can put you on the path for your future. Um, so... I love finances, I love numbers, um, but not everyone does, and that's completely understandable, but it's by facing them and by taking responsibility for them, you can really put yourself in the right direction.